Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the Elseworlds crossover. Today we're going to be doing my trailer breakdown for the new extended promo that they released last night. And additionally, we're going to be going over the new crossover photos because they released a whole load more and this happened whilst I was recording, so that's going to be at the end of this video. Also, we're going to be talking about the three synopsises that have been released for the crossover, so lots to break down, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So before this video starts, if you guys could go over to my Twitter and give me a follow because I'm really active over there and I know some of you guys probably don't hear me talking about my Twitter a lot but that's the best way to interact or you can email me if you got anything you want to say like any theories any ideas to do with the crossover or any of the shows really it would mean so much if you would like to actually reach out so that was just like a little plug to start off this video but essentially what we've been getting over the past few weeks or so is little trailers and we got our first like 30 second promo the other day after Supergirl and this is essentially that trailer but just different and this one was aired last night so last night was Wednesday night so I think maybe after Riverdale or something like that this promo was released and it hasn't had much publicity due to the fact that it's pretty much the same promo as the Supergirl one the other night. But there is new shots and I feel like we have to break this down because it is cut differently. But also we got the synopsis. So let's go right ahead and talk about the synopsis and then we'll go through the trailer after. So this is how the Flash's episode synopsis goes. When Barry Allen and Oliver Queen wake up one morning and realise they have swapped bodies with each other, the two set off to find what disturbed the timeline to cause such a shift. However, things go quickly from bad to worse when they present their case to Team Flash and the gang doesn't believe them. Barry and Oliver realise they need Supergirl's help and travel to Smallville on Earth-38 where they end up meeting Kara's cousin, Clark Kent, and intrepid reporter Lois Lane. And the Monica Garrett guest stars as the Monitor. So that is the first part of the crossover. This is the Flash's episode and this synopsis is really exciting. It reveals so much as to what's going on with Barry and Oliver. So let's go through this part of the synopsis bit by bit. So Barry and Oliver wake up one morning and realize they've swapped bodies with each other. The two set off to find what disturbed the timeline to cause such a shift. So they initially assume that the timeline's changed and we don't know that the timeline's changed, but that is a possibility. And the fact that the synopsis mentions the timeline could make you think that instead of actually changing reality, Dr. Destiny might have gone back in time and changed something in the past that is integral to actually changing this and because you would have to assume changing someone's persona and they're being aware of it, like in the crossover, like these two are aware that they're in the wrong bodies, that they've switched with each other. It's something changed with reality rather than just the timeline. If the timeline changed, everyone would forget and there would be no logical way to actually explain why these two, when they were born presumably, actually changed bodies and they know they've changed. So I think it's more to do with reality as the trailers have been teasing. They keep on using the word reality changing over and over and over again. So it's kind of surprising seeing that the wording in the synopsis is timeline. I think that's just what Barry's going to assume and what Oliver's going to assume because that's what they used to not normally does the entire reality and everything else change that no one else surrounding them knows. So they go from, so things go from bad to worse as they present their case to Team Flash and the gang doesn't believe them, as I just mentioned. And so this is where we're going to probably get some really great moments with Caitlyn, Cisco, Iris, all of them from Team Flash with Oliver and Barry as they most likely go over and show evidence that perhaps these people have always been like this, that they've always been like this in this version of reality to Team Flash. And the trailer links into this, we'll talk about that after I've gone through this. And so Barry and Oliver realise they need Supergirl's help and travel to Smallville on Earth-38, where they end up meeting Kara's cousin, Clark Kent, and Lois Lane. So this is the most exciting part of this synopsis because it reveals we're in fact going to be travelling to Smallville on Earth 38. That hasn't been confirmed as to right now, and it's great to see that they're actually going to be going to Earth 38, and so 
they're going to meet Clark, they're going to meet Lois, and they're going to be there with Kara, and that's where the connection between Supergirl and everyone from Earth 1 is going to be in this crossover, so that's where they're going to be teaming up, and most likely Clark Kent and Lois are going to be coming along with them, because we know they're in every episode of this crossover, so that's so exciting, they're going to be going to Smallville on Earth 38, not Earth 1, not anywhere, it's our version of Clark Kent, it's our version of Lois Lane, who we're going to be meeting for the first time. Additionally, the synopsis says, the Monica Garrett is going to be in the episode as the Monitor, and this is going to be most likely to do with the main villain of the crossover, the sort of mastermind behind what's going on, and that is in fact Dr. Destiny, and that's teased in the next synopsis as Jeremy Davis plays him. So let's go over episode 2 of the Elseworlds crossover, and this is how the synopsis goes. The Elseworlds crossover continues in Gotham City with Batwoman. With Oliver and Barry still stuck in the other's bodies, the two get a lead on John Deegan and head to Gotham City with Supergirl to figure out why their reality has changed. While there, they meet the mysterious Kate Kane who provides them with information that leads the group to Arkham Asylum. So this is super intriguing. This is more of the Arrow type part. Obviously this is the Arrow episode, but it's more to do with the more grounded nature of what's going on. And we're going to be visiting Gotham City, meeting Ruby Rose, presumably for the first time in this episode. So I doubt she's gonna make an appearance in the first episode unless it's a small cameo. So she's gonna be big in episode two and episode three of the crossover. And so let's break this down bit by bit. So it continues in Gotham City with Batwoman and Oliver and Barry want to find answers and the two get a lead on John Deegan. So John Deegan is Dr. Destiny. He is going to be the main villain. He is situated in Arkham Asylum as this synopsis teases. And so the two head to Gotham City with Supergirl in order to figure out why their reality has changed. And you would have to presume from this, most likely he is probably from Earth 1 due to the fact that Oliver and Barry are getting changed and nothing else has changed from Earth 38. So Kara obviously thinks they're themselves and that's been confirmed by the producers. Kara is the one that hasn't been changed at all. She sees this reality as a false reality as Barry and Oliver sees it because she's from another Earth and that doesn't affect her right now. And so they're going all together to find out why their reality has changed. And while they're there, they're going to be meeting Kate Kane, Batwoman, obviously played by Ruby Rose, as we keep on mentioning. I'm really looking forward to seeing Ruby in this crossover. Yes, I'm not the biggest fan of her acting resume so far that I've seen her in, but I don't think she's been given the right scripts, the right things. I haven't seen John Wick, I do have to say that. Loads of people love John Wick. And so she gives them the information that leads them to Arkham Asylum. So this is the sort of more detective side of the Bat family and this link to Batman. So I'm guessing we're going to get a lot of references to Batman considering we're in Gotham and we've got Batwoman, a member of the Bat family in the future. So let's go over episode 3 of the Elseworlds crossover and this is how the synopsis goes. The battle concludes. Supergirl, The Flash, Green Arrow and Superman engage in the battle of their lives. And that is it. That's the episode 3 synopsis. This is going to be a massive episode. Also, we do know there is going to be one Legends member making a cameo in the crossover. We don't know who it is yet but you would have to presume maybe it is not one of the main members because that might be a hassle to get them in just for one little cameo scene. I feel like it's going to be someone that used to be part of the Legends team and yeah, I don't know. That's just me theorizing. I don't think it's going to be Sarah, but Supergirl, The Flash and Green Arrow and Superman engage in the battle of their lives. So the fact that they're including Superman with these three titular characters is so exciting because that means that Superman is a humongous part of this crossover. He's going to be with them the whole way, presumably, or maybe he just comes in, but we know he's in all three episodes, but whether the fact that our version of Superman's in all three episodes, that remains to be seen. We know black suited Superman's going to be a massive part and you would have to presume Maybe they just switch in and out of black suit Superman and normal Superman because probably they don't want to overdo it with all the Superman content and so Superman's going to be a big part in fighting black suit Superman and everyone else that is a villain in this crossover. So that is all to do with the synopsis and now let's go on to the trailer, the bit that you've been waiting for. So essentially what's new is there's no new dialogue, it's the same dialogue 
just a different recap version of the trailer and the new shots in the trailer is of Barry and Oliver presumably in Star Labs as they look on the computer screen and you get some shots of them looking at the computer screen and you see Barry with his face of shock and you see that very same West Allen photo and you see that very same West Allen wedding photo on the glitch screen but instead it's Oliver Queen and most definitely this is done on purpose once again due to the fact that you can see the Photoshop is really off but that is the point this reality is warped beyond imagination and things just are not lining up and I think that's a very effective way that they've actually done this and so that's all the new shots I think there's just a tiny different version of this shot with Jay Garrick obviously this is probably the version of Barry Allen from the 90s TV show I just say Jay Garrett because that's who John Wesley Shipp plays in The Flash. This is when they're facing off against black suited Superman and you see Green Arrow Barry right there, obviously Grant Gustin. So let's move on to the photos. So this all happened, this all dropped when I was actually recording this video so I'm going to tag this on at the end of the video but we've got a whole bunch of new photos like I'm talking a lot and we already have a lot and this excites me so much so we're going to be breaking it down into full depth even though this is going to be a long video hopefully you guys don't mind so yeah let's get right ahead and break down these photos so these are new photos from the Elseworlds crossover and in the first photo these aren't in chronological order just to let you guys know we see Grant Gustin and Stephen Amell playing different versions of themselves so in a different reality perhaps on black suited superman's earth perhaps on another earth most likely because we know the other versions of our characters are going to be themselves throughout the crossover unless they're going undercover this is a different version of our characters and you see them on the street in that persona they're wearing the same clothes and they are from the comic books it's a version of different characters i have totally forgot the name of the name in the comics but i think it's something twins if you guys remember let me know in the comments down below but we get a really really nice photo of grant in the green arrow costume on the street and additionally our best look at oliver queen obviously as the flash so this is barry in this instance as played by Stephen Amell and he looks incredible in this like seriously this is definitely one of my favorite photos for so far from this crossover additionally we get to see him and Grant back in those su same suits and they are in a bar and this is the scene where Cisco's there James Olsen's there these different versions of themselves most likely on another earth and then we move on to a photo of Jeremy Davis and Monica Garrett as their characters as Dr. Destiny and as the Monitor and it seems like in this crossover the Monitor might be playing sort of both sides as it seems like he does give this book that probably does change reality at some point in this crossover so I'm kind of confused as to what's going on with them but we know Dr. Destiny is going to be like the main villain of the crossover at least the mastermind so we get a really nice photo of Barry, played by Stephen Amell, and Candace Patton, obviously, as Iris, as they play with this relationship that, obviously, Barry, Stephen Amell, I always have to say this, this is so confusing, is very aware that this is wrong, that he's in the wrong body, but he's gonna have to explain it, and it seems like that's probably what's happening there. And then we skip over to the Kent farm, and we get some really nice photos some just different versions of the scene with Tyler Hecklin and Elizabeth Tullock and we see obviously Clark Kent and Kara as they sit on the truck having a beer you know as you do just catching up and we get a photo of Grant and Stephen as themselves but obviously as the different versions of themselves as the synopsis teases this is when they're on Earth 38 and they're at the Kent House farm in Smallville Additionally, there's a photo and Cisco has actually come along with them and you get to see Kara there as well. So moving on to the next shot, the next photo is our first look at Nora Freeze in this episode and this is played by Stephen Amell's wife and this is very exciting. It seems like maybe this is a version of the Freeze gun, maybe she's from another Earth, presumably, but... I don't think she's going to have that much of a big role, but it teases the idea for Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze got mentioned recently on the Flash TV show, so maybe this is going to be a link to Killer Frost in this crossover. So we get a shot of Supergirl and she holds that book that the Monitor has been seen 
holding, also Dr. Destiny has been seen holding, and in behind the scenes photos we know black suited Superman had it, and normal Superman had it, and it seems integral to this crossover and the powers of changing a reality. An amazing photo of Batwoman and the Flash can be seen in the background and Batwoman is holding some sort of serum or some sort of liquid inside this device. Maybe it's something from Arkham Asylum, but this is just an amazing look at Batwoman. Like seriously, she looks so cool. Additionally, another really nice photo just after the Green Arrow has taken out some of these Arkham Asylum inmates, you get to see what looks like to be a very kind of angry looking Batwoman, but we'll see if she's actually angry or not. And now we move on to our last photo, and this last photo teases something really, really exciting, as you get to see John Barrowman, Kirk Acevedo, and the actor, I forgot his name, but for Deathstroke's son. So, wow, like three different versions as police officers. Most ironic thing is because these are all villains on our Earth. This is most likely, most definitely from another Earth, another reality. As you can see, the Central City police car behind them, and like John Barrowman is back. That's so exciting. He obviously plays Malcolm Merlin. Joe is back, Joe, Deathstroke's son. And additionally, the villain of this season of Arrow and last season of Arrow, played by Kirk Acevedo, who did an amazing job last episode, is playing a cop. Like, seriously, these guys are all hardcore villains. Maybe Malcolm Merlin less so than some of these, but he's been a villain at points. And it's just so intriguing to see these different versions of our characters. Like, you don't expect any of these guys to be cops. And they are in Central City. It is a massive subversion and it's just an amazing photo to look at. So, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's been a longer video, but if you do enjoy these longer videos, please be sure to let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the trailer? What do you think of the photos? What do you think of the synopsis? We've had so much to break down, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye. It doesn't make us strong, it doesn't make us weak. Tongue tied to service like shark creep.